Our initial experiences of the DHR, based in Siliguri, are now behind us. And we've now got to bridge the gap there on the map between Rantong and Kursiong, which we should do by road. And then the following day, from Kursiong, we should travel upwards and onwards, literally, through Gum, at the summit of the line, and dropping down into Darjeeling. So all that's ahead of us. And I hope you enjoy this little film record. After a road journey to Kursiong, which really defies description, we arrived at our hotel, Cochrane Place, which also as a hotel defies description. Quaint, perhaps, characterful, perhaps, but my goodness, any hotel where the entrance is as a Volkswagen on the roof has to be different from the norm. Two old Land Rovers in the back garden. Views out over misty valleys with small buildings clinging to the hillside. A representation of a Darjeeling railway engine there. And there's the entrance, the welcoming entrance to what proved to be a splendid location for a stay. Both inside and outside the hotel there was much to take one's interest. The furnishings, the decor, the quirkiness, wherever one looked, made the whole place a really fascinating location. There was certainly much to discuss at lunchtime and we looked forward to our afternoon trip into the village. After lunch in our twos and threes, we strolled up the road towards the centre of Kursiong, taking in the scenes as we went, which were many and varied. The children were just leaving school, so they 
were as interested in us as we were in what they were doing. Darjeeling is famed for its schools and some of them, as you can see in this case, are boarding schools which quite clearly have a long tradition of excellence to attract pupils. The Hindu and Buddhist religious influences were there for all to see as were the back-breaking loads handled by some of the bearers. Gorkha land is the name given by the nationalistic movement which is trying to establish a self-governing state in the area and uh, whether or not it will ever sever itself from the influences of Calcutta one would not know. Certainly nobody was prepared to commit themselves. Down on the left there is a tea plantation with the women pickers sheltering under their umbrellas as they go about their back-breaking task expertly from what we've seen elsewhere. And finally we reached the centre of the village which again had many sites of interest particularly the people it's the people that interested me and the way they survive in their various stations in life they all seem interested in what we were doing and I was pleased to share what I was doing with them and at last we arrived at Kursiong Station, 4,864 feet. Just down the main street from the station was this little engine shed, which seemed to have two functional locomotives and one in a state of dismemberment stroke repair. And the engine nearest to the camera proved to be the locomotive which would pull our train next day to Darjeeling. This more modern motorcycle was just passing through. And there we have it, the B-Class locomotive B791, which will be our motive power tomorrow. But it shared the shed, as I said a moment ago, with a couple more locomotives, number 786, and in a moment we shall see the dismembered locomotive. There she is, number 804. So plenty to smile about already from the assembled company. Whether this little family group living in the open, just along the road from the engine shed, had anything to smile about, I leave to your imagination. The station signs and the plaque established under the UNESCO brief stating that this was now a World Heritage Railway mean that we're actually at the heart of the matter on Kursiong station. The station buildings there and the platform were a meeting place for the locals and there we have the station yard, the water tower and other interested locals.
I leave it to you to judge whether I was successful in my efforts to film the sunset that evening from the back of the hotel. Certainly the weather could have been better and the cloud could have been less. But as I always say in these circumstances, it was how it was. And so that's how I filmed it. Kersiong Sunset The following morning it was up with the lark or at least up with the bulbul -bul, which is one of the vociferous little local birds to see what there was to be seen which may or may not have been different from our views in the late afternoon on the previous day. Anyway, after breakfast it was back to the main street of Kursiong to check on the readiness of our locomotive. Make sure we had some motive power for the day. And my goodness, we witnessed some, I think it's called pavement engineering at home here. But that was witnessed in full measure, as you'll see in a short while but it was ultimately successful. There's the view down the road towards the little engine shed and already in steam outside the shed is our locomotive being attended to on both sides by a veritable army of hammer wavers, chisel wavers, leverers and even a sporadic painter and oiler. The chappie working on the left hand side of the locomotive, viewed from the front, seemed to have quite a subtle touch and soon had the motion reassembled without too great a difficulty. But it was a different story on the other side of the engine, as you'll see. The hammering, which is already audible, coming from the other side, should give a clue to the proceedings. Thank <laughs> you. 
This chappie painted everything which stood still long enough to be painted. He was busy with the blacking of the chimney and the front of the boiler casing. Now to the other side, the motion is disassembled and most of the components are lying in the dust on the floor. Pins, bushes, tools, everything which could possibly be. The problem was that the various universal couplings which made up the complex drive side motion were worn. Pins, even when they were inserted correctly, still left play which was over and above that which could be tolerated on a journey such as the one we were going to make. So there were efforts made to shim those joints and then the pins wouldn't go through because the shims were too large for the job they were being asked to perform and it really was an exercise in pavement engineering as I referred to just now but ultimately it all went together and the engine completed its journey well done Wait! 
In the background, while all this was going on, life went on as usual. The railway running close alongside the road, pedestrian traffic, vehicular traffic, everything that went together to make up the street scene. We still don't seem to be much further forward. It's still there in the dirt and the journey to Darjeeling seems a long way off. But our friend with the paintbrush and some white paint is now busy, as I said, decorating anything which stood still long enough. Even the pins that the assemblers have just inserted, possibly not for the last time, received a coat of white paint. But he did it with a smile on his face. Bless him.
is being made, Martin, yeah. from the thousands of bits from the I reckon a bit more pain to do the trick. We're making progress. The locomotive is now to be cold. Coal was heaped into little wicker containers, which the chappie then climbed up the side of the locomotive to tip his load of coal into the tender, which sits above the boiler. And then coal is delivered during the journey down his chute, and the fireman is able then to stoke the boiler properly in very restricted conditions there's a load going up on the back of the gentleman Thank you. 
Well, I think we're pretty much there with the locomotive. It's, it's reassembled. There's coal in the bunker. So we'll wander back along to the station and see how the spectators are building up on the platform. There's four of them in prime position. And here comes our locomotive. Through the points at the yard entrance leaving the traffic behind and into the dedicated yard area. The manoeuvres to attach the engine to the two coaches which will make up the train are quite complicated. The train in its entirety will be drawn out of the station again come forward to the platform the engine will then detach from the coaches that too will go retrace its steps and then will be linked to the front of the train and will finally leave the platform pushing the coaches out into the street and it will then reverse i.e. come forward and climb up the hill through the shops and between the pedestrian and vehicular traffic and we should be on our way.
The locomotive now returns light engine and will be coupled to the front of the two coaches which will then be pushed out of the station in the first stage of our journey to Darjeeling but that's a little while off yet as you will see.
this dear soul sitting there at the end of the platform seemingly oblivious to everything which was going on was actually totally blind and was just sitting there hoping for alms to come her way what a situation amidst all this chewing and throwing Well, we're on our way. We're being pushed away from the platform. We should go through the point work at the entrance to the main street and then the locomotive will pull its train up the slope on the first stage of our journey. Two German visitors, a husband and wife, who we'd made contact with, were busily trying to get their final pictures of this particular journey. Thank you. 
I think this was just a precautionary check to make sure that all the work that had been done on the motion there was holding together and the delay was minimal. nature of the damage which can happen to both road and railway by landslips is very apparent in the roadworks which we can see behind the train at this point. You can also see how close the railway is to the edge of this particular cliff. An amazing piece of engineering, the, the whole rail infrastructure. This is a scheduled stop at the station named Tung, which as you will see is five and a half thousand feet above sea level. We're climbing.
Lovely carriage there. Oh yeah, the court brings in the house. Again, we see Alain, our French friend, seemingly abandoned, but chasing his motor car. Train whistles for another ungated road crossing. Clouds in the valley seem to thicken as we get higher and higher. Flags across the road herald another building of religious significance perched on the edge of the hillside.
Little school children hurry along the platform as we approach the station of Sonada, which is roughly halfway. two or three stills of our locomotive waiting at the head of its train at Sonada and then we should be underway again Half an hour later, in the gathering gloom, we arrive at the town of Goom, which very much lives up to its name and is the summit of the... This is a much smaller locomotive, a little 040 I think, which was a static exhibit at Goom. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
did a complete circle there, and we're back where we started in Sunter. The last lap of our journey, dropping down towards Darjeeling, which is the town there in the distance. Stragglers try to catch up with the train as a water tanker thunders by. This is a water stop with which we should become quite familiar. It's just outside the station of Darjeeling. This, I think, is one of my most favourite pieces of signage on the tour. Beauty parlour, ladies only.
off the train now for a quick shot of it negotiating the street scene and here we are at the little engine shed that's familiar to us from the videos of the Darjeeling Railway and the locomotive detaches itself from its train and leaves the platform so we've arrived there she is by the turntable which is no longer in use actually So in the late afternoon sunshine at Darjeeling station our day draws to a close and our little film reaches a natural conclusion and we can look forward to getting to our hotel and having our usual wash and brush up and exchanging impressions of another splendid day.